Welcome back, everybody. Our next speaker is Vanessa Scott. Vanessa started the MAS program after working on a project in the Seychelles Islands, monitoring the health of coral reefs following bleaching events. With a background in... <laughs> don't get smashed. With a background in business, marketing, and communication, she's excited to apply her skill set post-graduation to working in the blue economy. The title of her talk is Who Will Surf for Science? Understanding Motivations to Engage Surfers in Citizen Science with SmartFin. All right, thanks guys. My story starts way back in 2010. Um, right after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill that devastated the Gulf of Mexico. Um, it was at this time that I was working in Los Angeles in my then decade-long career in the biotech industry, and this event hit me to my core and made me feel compelled to do something, to take action to help the ocean. But I felt powerless. I didn't have a science background, and I didn't know what I could do that would be meaningful to help. Uh, until I learned about citizen science, which is basically where everyday people without science backgrounds can uh, participate in a project and collect important information for scientists to use in their research. So I found a project, like Samantha mentioned, uh, in the Seychelles Islands, um, where I was studying coral reefs uh, and how they were uh, rebounding after bleaching events and scuba diving, two things of which I had never done before. So I spent a year in the Seychelles falling in love with science, and that's where I really found out and understood the power that citizen science has to engage and educate non-scientists like me. So much so that it inspired me to come here to Scripps and pursue my master's uh, and hopefully use my skill set and background in business and marketing communications to help ocean enterprises be successful. So when I came to Scripps, I was interested in learning more about other citizen science projects, and that's when I learned about SmartFin, um, which was very exciting to me. Having grown up in Los Angeles, I was raised among a community of surfers, including my dad, who taught me to surf when I was 16. Uh, and I thought this could be really powerful, um, because from all the surfers I knew, they are very ocean-minded and passionate advocates. So I thought this could connect with a huge uh, audience. Um, so I was so excited, in fact, that I went on the website and I was ready to pay whatever it took to buy my dad a smart fin for his birthday. And of course, my timing was impeccable. I couldn't. Uh, they weren't available. It was before the pilot program. But it planted a seed in the back of my head to think, if I was interested in getting and buying a smart fin for my dad to participate, how many other people in the surf community would do the same? So, when the SmartFin team came around in the fall and asked our cohort to participate in a capstone project to help them, I jumped at the chance to be able to apply my background and um, kind of skill set to inform a business and marketing plan to help them launch. So, what I love so much about SmartFin is the simplicity of it. It's a surfboard fin that basically you charge it, you stick it on your board. It's got sensors inside that can collect oceanographic data, currently sea surface temperature, and GPS location information that then syncs up to the cloud once the surfer is out of the water, which is where the scientists can access the information, and then also syncs into a smartphone app so the uh, SmartFin user can see the impact of their contribution. So they don't have to move to the other side of the world, quit their job and their life, and spend a year away. <laughs> they can simply do what they are doing and make it meaningful. So why is this important? Well, uh, these green dots represent the buoys that are currently collecting oceanographic uh, data along the coastlines. So you can see that there's large areas of the coastline that are not monitored currently. And this is because it's really expensive and really challenging with all the physical activity and the waves in these areas. Uh, and with our ever-changing climate, it's more important than ever that we get uh, as much information as possible to do effective coastal management planning and mitigation efforts. So surfers represent a huge population that spend a lot of time in these areas and have been shown to be great platforms for data collection. So you can see on the left with these data points that the SmartFin um, users were able to collect during the pilot program, really filling in these gaps of information. And this can be done around the world. So when I set out to kind of strategize about how I was going to find out and inform a business and marketing plan for SmartFin, I really wanted to answer three questions. Who within the surf community would be interested in participating in a citizen science project with SmartFin? Because not all surfers are the same. Uh, why would they want to participate? And also, how much, if anything, would they be willing to pay to do so? 
So to do this, I took a three-prong approach. Uh, first was doing an extensive literature review on citizen science projects and what makes them successful long-term. Uh, another one, market research into the surf market, which was a blast. I spent almost a year kind of immersed interviewing surfers, uh, surf industry professionals, um, stakeholders, uh, smartphone team members. I went to surf conferences, events, demo days. It was a lot of fun. And I took everything that I learned from the first two steps and created a survey to deploy directly to surfers themselves to ask these questions, among many others, to kind of dig deeper into their mindset, uh, their habits, their preferences, their environmental perspectives, and their use of technology while surfing. So um, uh, the survey was distributed through Qualtrics, online survey platform, through social media. I was able to connect and had a lot of help with distribution. Um, was able to connect with surfers from around the world. We had responses from somebody that surfed in the Baltic Sea, somebody that was from the Canary Islands, Fiji, Chile, Peru, um, all over. Some of them even stood up paddleboarded in the Great Lakes. Um, and out of the 207 responses, 147 were usable. So, some highlights from the literature review. I was able to find out, uh, basically, understanding the motivations uh, for why people participate in citizen science is key. And it's really important to take that into account when designing a citizen science project to make sure that they're being satisfied. Because a lot of times in these citizen science projects, there's a huge initial interest and then a huge drop off not long after. Um, so for long-term engagement, making sure that those are satisfied. And then also the top uh, motivators identified across the board seem to be altruistic and science-based. So people wanting to contribute to something bigger and people wanting to contribute to science. Um, it's important to work together. So the best, most successful projects are when the interests of the citizen scientists are the same as those of the scientists that are using the information. Uh, and finally, to make it fun. So with all of the opportunities we have to use technology now in citizen science projects, including SmartFin, um, they find that the data shows that um, by having like making it like a game, people are encouraged to participate long term. So I'm sure we've all seen everybody looking at their Apple Watch, walking in circles at work to connect their circles, whatever works, right? <laughs> <laughs> So next up was the survey, and it was great because it answered a lot of the questions that I was looking out to answer. So first up is, we, I, after running a, an analysis with uh, our software, with all of the data that was uh, included, I was able to identify some groups that emerged that were, showed strong interest for participation. The largest of which is the avid surfer, so these males tend to be in their 30s. They have been surfing for six or more years, multiple times a week. Uh, they tend to use shortboards and longboards. Uh, the female longboarders was the second largest group, so these ladies are also in their 30s. They're longboard purists. Um, they don't usually use technology while surfing. A smaller but distinct group are stand-up paddleboarders. They're men in their 40s who uh, <laughs> self-identify as early adopters for uh, technology. So these are some great places for the smartphone team to go recruit um, some smartphone users. So the next step is the why. So when uh, asked what would motivate them to participate in the smartphone project, overwhelmingly the top motivators uh, chosen were science-based to help scientists understand the ocean and collect data to help improve the health of the ocean and altruism to contribute to something bigger. So this is not only in alignment with the literature review, but it's great news for the smartphone team because it's also in alignment with the interests of the scientists. So that's when projects are most successful. And then my pleasant, so present supplies was that the majority said that they would be willing to pay for a smart bin. Um, they were given the option to choose anything, including $0 up to $500, and they were able to choose an exact dollar amount. The average dollar amount chosen was about $87, and I just kind of grouped it here to show you that the majority kind of fell between the $50 and $100 range. So this is really great news because it shows that this project has interest strong enough to maybe provide a, a sustainable revenue income stream to help support the foundation and the expansion of it long term. 
Um, some other information, so currently what the smartphone can tell users um, when asked what was most interesting, water temperature seemed to be of highest interest. I thought this was great because it supported the fact that they were interested in the science aspect. Um, and least interest, at least here, is showing the tracking activity. And when I did the market research, I thought this was interesting because some of the other surf performance um, activity tracking devices that were on the market, like the Trace device and the Nixon Mission Watch, uh, are no longer available. So both the survey and the market kind of might suggest that this information might not be as interesting to surfers, uh, and that can be used to advise the smartphone team on what to highlight uh, in the app and the interface. So all of the information and all of the data that I learned from the survey and market research and the literature review, I synthesized into kind of a launch plan for the team. Um, just some highlights are we have found and identified some groups that might be interested in participating, the avid surfer, the longboarder, stand-up paddleboarder. Um, it's very important to make sure that when um, communicating the impact of what smartphone users are doing, that they're highlighting the things that are motivating them, so the scientific aspects, um, and they can do this through the application. Uh, another one is to make it like a game, so if they can kind of build in some recognition and rewards uh, for the users with increased participation, that can be something that can encourage long-term use. And then also it can generate a sustainable revenue stream to support project growth. So this is a great way for people, for the smartphone team to be able to have more um, bandwidth to be able to increase the amount of data they're collecting, get more fins in the water and make it more meaningful and contribute more to science. Um, some other ideas I had with the app for highlighting uh, things that are of interest to the smartphone user could be a project feed where when they scroll through they can see different projects that um, they can contribute their data to. So that can be a great way to highlight uh, the different projects of the scientists and what they're doing. So um, it could be a powerful educational tool. Another thing would be push notifications that are kind of geolocated. So for example, as people are putting their smart fins in the water out here in La Jolla, it might have a push notification saying that, hey, you're surfing next to a marine protected area, and it could link to more information with that, or possibly there's some research going on on seagrass beds or kelp um, forests here, um, so maybe they can kind of link up with that. And then another idea would be a heat map that could kind of highlight places that they um, need more data collected in. So it might inspire surfers to go check out places they wouldn't normally, uh, and it might inform the smartphone team more about the users as well. So I just wanted to thank my capstone committee, um, the smartphone team, all the leadership team here at MAS NBC, um, this cohort especially for including me in everything. I feel the love and it means a lot to me because I kind of started this a while back. <laughs> and I've been through a few cohorts <laughs> here and there. <laughs> yes, I started back in 2012 here. Um, I want to thank everybody that helped me distribute the survey. It means a lot. And everybody that took the survey, I really appreciate it. Friends, family, and then everybody that I was with in my citizen science project. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. What about the Olympics coming up next year? Yes, I love that question. I have the same question myself. Actually, uh, that's another recommendation I'm making to the team to see if there's any way that it can be highlighted throughout that. Um, good point. Any other questions? No? All right. Thanks, you guys.